the United States only lost 268 soldiers in the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Yet this battle still influences United States and Native American relations today. The Battle of the Little Bighorn is one of the most well-known battles in the Great Sioux War, a fight between the Native American tribes in the Black Hills of South Dakota and the United States government. General Custer, an American war hero, led the United States Army. But his defeat and death eventually led to the United States winning the war in over a century of discrimination and persecution for all Native Americans. Though this battle is critical to both United States and Native American history, many myths and half-truths surround it, making it difficult for modern historians to understand what truly happened. By diving into the battle and dividing propaganda, oral myth, and fact, we can see what really happened in General Custer's last stand. Who was General Custer? George Custer was born in 1839 to a proud Democratic father, but even early on, Custer revealed his rebellious spirit. He was not a good student, mediocre at most, but after graduating from West Point, he proved himself an excellent soldier during the Civil War. His courage during battles was inspiring, but his arrogance afterward distanced other soldiers from him. He did earn distinctions during the Battle of Gettysburg. After that, he married his wife, Elizabeth Bacon, who became Libby Custer. Even marriage wasn't enough to settle him, though. He went AWOL in 1867 to visit his wife. However, the American army was desperate for any men, so Custer's punishment was not severe. He was back in less than a year to help the military combat the Native Americans. The Americans were continuing to encroach on indigenous lands, and the Native tribes were growing increasingly frustrated. Fighting the Native Americans was not like fighting the American forces that had been influenced by European fighting styles. Custer was fascinated by the difference and studied Native American war techniques for several years. He won his first victory against the indigenous people at the Battle of Washita in November 1868 and continued to gain renown for fighting against various tribes. Custer even encountered two leaders of the Great Sioux War. Both Chief Sitting Bull and Chief Crazy Horse attacked Custer's station at the Northern Pacific Railroad Survey in Yellowstone, allowing all three leaders to gain some understanding of the other's tactics. Custer certainly had a colorful career by the time he stepped onto the battlefield in 1876. His arrogance and underhanded tactics made him infamous among his peers, but his victories also made him popular. After his death during the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Libby Custer fought to honor her husband, securing his placement in American history as one of its memorable war heroes. What caused the Battle of the Little Bighorn? The Battle of the Little Bighorn was part of the Great Sioux War. The main reason the war began was that Americans discovered gold in the Black Hills of South Dakota. The discovery came from Custer's expedition in 1874, when Lieutenant Colonel George Custer explored the Black Hills to verify if the rumor of gold was true. Another expedition followed the next year, affirming the presence of gold in the hills. Of course, a gold rush began. American settlers rushed into the area to find their fortune and began taking over land that the Cheyenne and Lakota used for hunting. The Native American tribes were annoyed by the newcomers and responded violently. Their annoyance is understandable. Ten years before the Black Hills Gold Rush, the Lakota and Cheyenne tribe had to deal with prospectors in Bannock, Montana. At the time, the United States government signed the Treaty of Fort Laramie, which promised to remove the American settlements in the area. Under a new administration, the government decided to force the Native Americans off their land instead of sending the prospectors packing, as promised. Part of that treaty had forced the Cheyenne tribe into the Great Sioux Reservation, which included the Black Hills. They had already lost much of their land. Now they had to deal with Americans trespassing again. The Cheyenne were a great military tribe, so they responded violently, fighting against the squatters and taking the little land they had left. However, not all the people in the Lakota and Cheyenne tribes descended immediately into violence. Some of them traveled to Washington, D.C., requesting that the president honor the Treaty of Fort Laramie. The American government chose to ignore it, Gold was of great value, so they offered to buy the Black Hills from the indigenous tribes for only $25,000, taking the only natural hunting grounds the people had left. Neither side was willing to honor the requests of the other, and the Great Sioux War began. Historians believe the United States government was eager to pick a fight because it believed it could easily beat the Native Americans, 
thinking most of the tribes would either be unable or unwilling to participate in battles, especially because spring was their primary hunting season. Americans also believed the tribes had inferior guns and had no other access to ammunition than what the United States government provided to them. However, they were wrong. The Native Americans mustered a large army and were able to procure more ammunition and better quality guns. The Native Americans used their more agile ponies and superior knowledge of the land to win victories against the United States Army. There were several battles in the Great Sioux War before the Battle of the Little Bighorn, but most were failures. Many of the American soldiers were inexperienced, especially against the Native Americans, so they were often unsure how to respond when the tribes fought back. The American difficulties during the early part of the Great Sioux War led to the Army sending George Custer to scout out two river valleys in the Montana area, the Rosebud and Little Bighorn. With his scouting expedition, Custer found a sizable indigenous village on June 25th. His prideful arrogance probably contributed to his decision to attack the village without sufficient staffing or artillery. At this point, the battle becomes murky for historians. No soldier fighting alongside Custer at that battle survived, and those who soldiered alongside him in other battles can only give second-hand accounts or opinions about Custer's decisions and strategy for the final battle. There are also Native American versions of this battle, but those were passed through the generations as oral stories, so the inconsistencies make reconstructing the fight difficult. Modern historians also struggle because propaganda fueled by Libby Custer surrounds the American version of the battle. She wanted her husband to be remembered as a hero, so she attacked anyone who suggested otherwise. Thus, historians could not explore all of the facts until Libby Custer died in 1933. But afterward, they discovered that the battle was nuanced, and there were multiple reasons for Custer's defeat. Before the battle began, he led the 7th Cavalry Regiment on a scouting expedition. They were traveling fast and light, but were also experienced soldiers who had fought the Native Americans before. When they found the Native American village, Custer decided to attack it. He believed there were only 200 warriors to worry about. Historians now believe that between 1,500 and 2,500 warriors were involved in the battle. Custer divided the regiment into three groups. Captain Frederick Benteen and Major Marcus Reno led the other two units. Custer intended to use the three groups to attack the village, capture women, children, and the elderly, and force the Native Americans to surrender. He had used this tactic in an earlier battle, which is most likely why he believed it would work again. Major Reno and Captain Benteen retreated early in the battle because they came under heavy fire. The Native American attacks were strong, pushing both units back to Reno Hill. The American troops quickly built fortifications and decided to wait for Custer to join them. However, that was not to be. Custer tried to keep his approach a secret and almost succeeded, but the Native Americans were on high alert. Although they did not have much time to prepare, they still met his forces at the river and pushed them back, fighting to keep their families safe. They pushed his forces back to Custer Hill, but the Native Americans picked off American soldiers during the retreat. Not a single American soldier from Custer's group survived the battle, which only lasted an hour at most. His men fought bravely, but they were utterly overwhelmed by the time they reached Custer Hill. The Native Americans, led by Crazy Horse, eventually broke through the skirmish line, attacking the soldiers with melee weapons. The soldiers had left their swords behind for the expedition and had no way to defend themselves in close quarters. Many soldiers surrendered, but the Sioux tribe did not take male prisoners, so they killed every soldier and even ritually mutilated their bodies to condemn their spirits to walk the earth for eternity. Although this was traditional for the Sioux tribe, especially when greatly riled, their actions drew intense backlash from the United States government. The government responded harshly, determined to win the war against the Native Americans once and for all. Their response greatly impacted every Native American left in the United States, and we are still sorting through the repercussions of it today. Why did Custer lose the Battle of the Little Bighorn? Although Custer's wife worked hard to squelch any question about her husband's decisions during the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Modern historians have discovered several reasons why the battle was a complete disaster for Custer. One factor that led to Custer's defeat was his lack of a good battle strategy. Custer and his troops had been traveling light for the past eight days. They had few weapons and short rations, both of which affected their ability to fight well in the battle. He had also refused to take the newest guns with him, 
So even though the Gatling gun still had some issues, Custer did not even have the option to use this new technology. However, most modern historians criticize him for not taking the 2nd Cavalry Regiment with him alongside the 7th Cavalry Regiment. Because of this, he was severely disadvantaged going into the battle, which may have been why his strategy was to capture women and children and then hold them hostage until the warriors surrendered. It had worked in the Battle of Washita, but Custer failed to adapt to a different environment, partly because he also disregarded his scouts. He was using Crow Scouts, who reportedly told him about the many Native Americans in the village, but he refused to listen to them, rushing right in with his plan. His haste meant that he did not have time to learn more about the village, and the force was much larger than Custer was expecting. Once he realized his mistake, it was too late to back down, and the soldiers panicked. Custer's ignorance going into the battle also prevented him from adapting quickly to the changing circumstances, something he had been able to do in earlier conflicts. He relied on intuition, not facts and tested battle theories, which meant that if he did not have proper scouting intelligence or ignored what he had, he was entirely in the dark and could not adapt effectively. A third reason that Custer lost the Battle of the Little Bighorn is that he did not have the regiment's respect. Many army professionals disliked him because he flouted the rules and ignored discipline. Many of these attributes came from his arrogance. Custer wanted to be a national hero, probably because he had developed political ambitions and was aiming for the White House. This ambition caused him to make several mistakes in the battle, including fighting against a nearly impossible enemy and refusing to call for help until it was too late. Although Custer's actions eventually led to the Native Americans being defeated and forced onto reservations, he still lost the battle and his life, attempting to show the world how great he was. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Battle of the Little Bighorn, check out our book, The Battle of the Little Bighorn, a captivating guide to one of the most significant actions of the Great Sioux War and how Custer's last stand impacted the Northern Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.